what is going on you guys welcome back to the channel in the previous video you guys saw we went to the junkyard we got a couple of items we came back we tore down the k20 we tore down the b18b1 engine for the rebuild hopefully in the next couple of days and today we're gonna be working on my brother's car a little bit i got some suspension stuff to do and the junkyard parts to put on and really get this car ready for the road but before we get to my brother's car i'm gonna be working on my uncle's land cruiser again you guys remember we did the radiator swap which I have right there. Mongo's been driving the Land Cruiser for the last three days. And when he got off of work yesterday, he went to his truck and realized there was a pool of ATF on the floor. So I drove all the way out there to figure out what was going on. And I realized that one of the hoses for the trans oil to the radiator was pinched and ripped. Now the hose looked like it's literally the same hose from factory in 1996. And it was like very, very bloated. So what had happened was when I put the fan shroud in, it kind of kinked the hose itself and cause a little tear which then every time he would drive or turn on the vehicle it would piss out ATF on the floor. I went over there, I snipped it, I shoved it in further, and then I clamped it down and he was able to drive it here. And today I need to button it up with changing the hose out and then fill up the transmission and then we can get this off the driveway to work on that. So I'm really not gonna show you guys this process. I'm just letting you guys know I gotta knock this car out first. I believe Fred is on his way here as well too to work on his car a little bit. And we'll show you guys Fred's car because I don't know if you guys have been asking me who Fred was and what he drives. A few of you guys may already know what Fred drives and a few of you guys may even know who Fred is, but if he shows up today, we'll, we'll show you guys his car a little bit. And like I said, I'm just gonna get right to it. So I'm almost done with my uncle's Land Cruiser, but Fred just pulled up as well. Now, again, a lot of you guys was wondering who this Fred guy I keep mentioning. Fred's the guy that goes to the junkyard with me and uh, I've known Fred for a little while now. And I've also shown some of his cars on the channel previously, if you guys ever paid attention. There was that crazy lifted Samurai that I've shown. There was a black CRX on TEs that I've shown. And um, I guess some people just really don't pay attention. But this is Fred, okay? Fred don't like being on camera without his face mask, but that's okay, no miss is the same way. And Fred has this, I think probably one of the baddest CRX up here in Northern California. And I've always seen this thing around before even knowing the guy. And then I was introduced to Fred from Higgins and we became friends. So I'm gonna show you guys real quick his car. It's pretty sick. It's got literally everything you can possibly think of. This whole entire car has been rebuilt inside and out and his interior fire obviously glass top fire who needs a tesla when you have a glass top tesla is nothing um it does have a barred engine and fred is here today to kind of just switch his valve cover out he has his um ls valve cover that's been just blacked out completely for the longest time and he finally got a freshly powder coated one beautiful wrinkle on it and this time he decided to you know keep all of the logo and stuff silver so i think the silver is just gonna pop off in the bay a lot more than the black because he does have like you know other silver things on the car to kind of you know work with it fred i thought i had a brand new one yeah but i ran out because i kept giving it to a lot of people but i have a fresh skunk 2 one look at that mm. but i do also have a bwr one i don't know if you like purple though but it's kind of flashy i like that which one? This one. This one? Yeah. I've only had it probably like 200 miles on it. And then I took it out of my motor. What do you think? How guys, much? what do you guys think, man? Look at this. S2. S2 versus whatever the hell that is. God dang. Freaking RTV to hell. Then that looks nicer, right? It's uh, good. Yeah. I mean, it's been sitting in my drawer forever, so. How much? I don't know. What if, I don't know what I'll, I'll deduct 20% off what the, the, the pricing is for that. I bought a brand spanking new from Skunk 2. I mean, like, roughly, what are we talking about? I don't know. We just throw it in your car, but I'm not tripping about it. I'm not <laughs> tripping about it. Come on, I got a spare BWR one. What happened to BWR? They kind of just disappeared.
So Fred's almost done over here. About to slap on that new valve cover with the OEM gasket, right? And uh, he also just installed the Skunk 2 cam cap seal. And I just want to show you guys that the typical leaks either is coming from the valve cover itself that you guys don't put the RTV here. It's either leaking from there because this unit right here, people think they can just get away by using a bunch of RTV. I mean, it does work, but it leaks eventually. And then the other part that oil comes from is distributor o-ring so if you guys change all, all of those seals including the cam gear camshaft seal you shouldn't have any leaks coming from the head so man that thing looks so good way better for it you ain't even got to finish putting it all the way it already looks a ton better and on top of that fred's got some new hardware as well too check this out speed factory titanium valve cover hardware this is pretty sick. Oh, shoot. It's open, Fred? Yeah. Why'd you open it? I was testing it. Oh, you was testing it. My bad. Sorry. Fred's car is looking much more fire with that valve cover adjustment and the cam seal. But, um, yeah, I think Fred's pretty much wrapped up today with his car well, just wanted to show you guys real quick what was that paint the battery <laughs> oh <laughs> the, the freaking green battery like i mean i mean you know honestly if you look at it it's really not that bad you know but at, what's what's that uh remember that jdm emblem there's like a the jdm leaf it's like one green one um yellow right mm -hmm. so he's got the green and yellow amateur but he's not an amateur anymore he's og so he's got that orange yellow I'll put, I'll put it right here, orange yellow. That's like an OG leaf. Um, I don't know if you ever heard of that, but um, you might want to look it up. Fred's car is looking super fire with that uh, valve cover um, replacement, but just want to show you guys Fred's car and let you guys know who Fred is because some of you guys yeah. did question it. This is his CRX and just want to give you guys a quick good look. That's Fred's car. Pretty much that's all it is. So I was just hanging out with Fred um, for a little bit and he just took off. We lost a lot of daylight, pretty unusual. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna work with my brother's suspension. Big shout out to Alejandro. He came through yesterday with some MPC drop forks right here. They're slightly used, but he gave me a great deal on it. And I need this for my brother's car to drop it a little bit lower. So this out of the box should drop the car two inches without touching the suspension. So if you look at my brother's car, it's low, but it's not low like he wants it he's gonna be rocking the wheels off the blue car and it's gonna look kind of funny with the offset and width on this gap so he wants me to drop this over the tire and i think with just the drop forks alone it's gonna do just that so that means if i do the drop fork drop the car i'm gonna have to adjust the rear suspension as well too now my only real main concern is the oil pan being this close to the floor so I told my brother, if I use the drop forks to drop the car lower, I recommend he switch over to a steel pan so I can reinforce the bottom of the pan and uh, give it that much more strength in case, just in case he taps anything while driving, it's not gonna shatter opposed to an aluminum pan. So from the floor going through the center of the hub to the wheel well, we're at 24 inches, right? Top of the tire to the wheel well, we're about I would say one and seven eighths. Let's just call that two. So I'm gonna go ahead and jack up the car and swap out. Um, he's talking Vietnamese and sounds like he's crying about something, I don't know. Anyways, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and jack up the car, uh, slap on MPC forks, Mel Mel's chilling right there, gotta feed him right now. Fred was saying something about um, somebody he knows threw the MPCs on his car and it was wide to the point that it hit the traction bar. I guess I'm going to figure that out when I throw it on right now. I'm going to go ahead and just slide this 17 bolt down and then stick it into the MPC. You guys can see the difference.
golly uh that looks pretty damn low except the back is still pretty high so it's raked hopefully the front will come up a little bit when i adjust the rear most importantly how are we looking over here mm, it's still over my tray so that's not too low and it still has to come up a little bit we were at 24 before and now we're at 22 i want to say 22 and a half give or take so that's an inch and a half drop and not the two like it says on the website i don't remember what it said on the website i just thought it was two but obviously i'll put it on the screen right here so we have a slight problem the car being as low as it is with the engine motor mount drop the axle is at a crazy bind so we are back out of here in the garage with my brother's car last night i was messing with the ride height and i was able to lift the car up maybe half an inch half an inch and the car is able to roll but it's still binding on something like i mentioned fred told me yesterday that the mpc fork was gonna hit the traction bar that is not our case and it is also not touching the axle like i thought it was gonna but it isn't it's just a crazy weird axle angle that's causing this issue so i just adjusted the coilover probably about three quarter of an inch and from the top of the sleeve to the bottom we're at two and a half and then let me show you guys the other side real quick herb just stopped by Yo, what's up, you guys, guys probably seen if uh you guys probably seen herb before he has that uh um plum wagon and he had that the gray one with the single can swap into which yeah. is unfortunately in the junk right now it is what it is um but herb just stopped by real quick and i'm just trying to button up the front suspension so on this side where are we at where did we start i didn't touch this side yet so this side we're at from the top sleeve we're at two inches so i went half an inch up on the other side i'm gonna adjust the same for this and then like i said it's pretty simple with the full body coil over you just break the collar loose and then you should be able to just turn it by hand that's how you raise the uh the car up and if you want to lower it you go the opposite direction so i'm gonna adjust this and then it totally slipped my mind i still have to do the manual rack bracket and bushing so let me button this up and then we'll go underneath the car to change that and then we'll drop it back on the floor to see if this car will roll or not so this is the power steering rack bracket and bushing and you can see the difference between the non-power steering rack bracket it is much much smaller so because we have a non-power steering rack in the car now and we didn't have this bracket and bushing before i had to use a silicone coupler i cut it up to compensate the gap in order to bolt up the manual rack with the power steering unit so now i have the non-power steering unit but it is again much smaller and the bolts are way off from each other so the only way i can make this work is to cut the uh, ends off here and then use a bolt with a washer which is what i'm already using now and it'll still it'll still secure the bracket but i don't want the small bushing to move around in this big half moon you know what i mean so this obviously fits perfect in the curve while the small bushing in the big bracket which is probably the same half moon on the subframe i don't want it to move around and that might cause clunking issues so i'm trying to figure out a solution for this and if i can't i'm probably just going to throw this back in and use it like that sorry for being upside down guys but right here we have the manual steering rack bracket and bushing and like i was mentioning earlier that fat gap on the top because the subframe is meant for the bigger bushing i took one of the silicone coupler and i slid it to a point where it compensated that gap and then I was able to uh, bolt the bracket down after slicing the ends off. You can see how the hole is over here. But I don't think it's going to move anywhere. It's pretty firm on there. And I think that's going to be Gucci Taters. Um, I guess this is like no different than the other one. But it is less uh, added like silicone coupler. So I prefer that over a whole bunch. I'm going to leave that alone. Let it be. It's really, it, it didn't really give me a problem before, but it just kind of bothered me not having the correct bracket on it. So I think the only way to really do this correctly is to swap the subframe as well too. 
Fred was telling me that the MPC fork being as wide as it is, that it interferes with the traction bar, the arms. And it looks like we have a pretty good gap there. So I don't think that's causing any type of like rotation binding. And the axle itself, I don't know if you guys can see it on this back side, aside from the spider webs. I think there's a gap. I can't see it, but there might be a gap between the axle and the fork. So I don't think that's causing any bindage issues either. So guys, I got the car back on the floor and we got a good, not, uh, it's about almost a two finger gap. Probably want to say an inch and a half over the tires opposed to the two and a half it was before. And right now the car is in neutral, the e-brake is down and Herb is back to trying to push the car forward. It's, it's not even moving, dude. Like it doesn't even want to roll at all. I'm kind of stumped actually. I'm pretty stumped. I guess I guess uh, process of elimination, right? Take off the MPC and put the stock see forks back on. Yeah. See if it rolls again. Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so today kind of shift focus a little bit. I was supposed to be working on the blue car, but the brown car didn't get finished because of bindage issues. But um, my buddy Herb swung over real quick to hang out since he is off of work. And he kind of enlightened me on what he's been doing. So this guy hasn't really driven his wagon as much anymore, only because he bought a Honda Element. And it's pretty damn sick. And uh, <laughs> the thing here is what I just learned from him is that uh, he's been living that... Would you consider this a van? I, I'm calling it van life, yeah. Okay, van life. Yeah. So I've been watching this YouTube channel called Mav Maverick, and this guy travels all over the country everywhere literally and lives out of his truck so herb has been doing this for fun and this fun kind of became a permanent thing and like you just heard it van life and the guy <laughs> lives out of his freaking element and he literally made a whole entire like Bench living platform. space out of it Everything. look yeah. at this i've only seen this on the instagram but now i'm actually seeing it in person this guy got a whole entire setup for him for wherever he is traveling to he can live sleep comfortably tell us a little bit about the inside and uh what all you've done in here to make it comfortable for you uh so pretty much right now um i worked with wooden pallets first and, I, rem uh, I remember seeing that at yeah, sonoma yeah exactly and uh I wasn't really feeling the wood. I was just like, it's cool, but it wasn't really like doing it for me. I felt give. I mean, I'm a big boy, you know? Right. But, uh, yeah, so at work we have uh, these um, plastic pallets. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, and it's like, they're they're solid pallets. Much more lighter than the wood too. Yeah, yeah, they're lighter and like they actually hold a lot. So <laughs> I chopped up uh, one of them and it's just a still. It's like on, a pedestal. Yeah, on each side. Right. To and give it a little height. And then um, I have four inch memory foam right there. So that, that right there is a oh, foam. Yeah. And it's just, I have the seat reclined. So the stock seat is at least still in here. Yeah. The backs are gone though. Yeah, I, I took out the backs. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, this this basically just slides in from the back. I'm gonna just gonna call this the living room space slash the kitchen-ish, <laughs> yeah, you know? The, this is definitely, I would say the kitchen. Whenever I cook, uh, I got a little camp stove burner. That's all you need, man. That's all yeah, you need. So. I got jump battery right here, my tools, uh, extra storage, you know, for... Yeah, that's that's what's nice about the pedestal, give yeah. it a little extra space down here. You know, I, a lot of van life videos that I saw, like, storage is always the one thing that people seem to always want, and it's like, yeah, there's things that you're going to want to have. And Especially on the road. Most definitely. You know, especially for living. There's yeah. a lot of like uh, necessities you need, right? And then even right up here, I, I'm using right up there, there's a pull. Oh, TV. snap. <laughs> um, I, so my battery generator is actually right here. Oh, sick. It's running my fan right now, but uh, it's, it's hooked up to solar. Oh, that's sick. So the solar comes up through the sun, through the moon roof. Do you have a I, solar up here now? Yeah. Oh, you it's know, go, here. go gadget. <laughs> So this right here is my 100 watt uh, flexible solar panel. Oh, I see, I see now. And uh, yeah, the the most wattage I've got her to bring in so far is 18 watts, but I was in Madeira. A huge Dutch Bro fan. Oh yeah. I'll tell you that. Yeah, Dutch Bros in Santa Cruz. Yes sir, you would just have to recently. <laughs> 
I'm like half the time if that's where you where you need me, that's that's you where go. you find this me. This is my therapy. Yes, sir. Hell yeah. Every time I'm checking my legs, I'm like, yep, this is it. And then you know Halloween's coming up, so Oh, I thought you took this from the fence at your house. Oh no. <laughs> If you guys want to follow him in his venture, I'll put his Instagram in the description below. He also sells, you still sell stickers and stuff? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, you don't really have much of him display like you did on your wagon. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have much stickers on this car, but Herb does make a lot of stickers out of the the back here of his element, and he does sell it on his, um, your other Instagram. Yeah, yeah, But I'll be sure stickers. to slither the stickers. I'll be sure to link that as well, too. But um, that's pretty sick, Herb, man. Hopefully you, uh, hope, you, hopefully, uh, you, you, you enjoy this for however long it comes man because um yeah it seems like you're enjoying it now so, so far so, so far, far two months in i've been enjoying it yeah yeah that's what's up so me and herb made a discovery okay so quickly let me let me show you guys real quickly um i took off one wheel still wouldn't rotate took off both wheels it rotated so i'm like is it the fork we pull the fork off it's not the fork there's no scoring no markings no nothing whatsoever and then when i put the wheel on right it will still rotate but as soon as i put the lug nuts tighten down it will stop right so i'm like okay let's lay on the floor let's let's see what's going on back here i couldn't see anything but while I was laying on the floor and looking up over there at the other wheel that was sitting right there next to the jack stand. You guys see that? The caliper is rubbing up on the wheel and that is why it's so hard to freaking move. So I came over here to look at this side and you can see it rubbing right there on the caliper grinding off the paint on the back side of the wheel and the caliper itself so let me pop this wheel off and show you guys right there that is our problem yep sorry brother <laughs> i don't know why this is any different than the other wagon but uh there you have it Quick little update. So I shaved down the caliper on the passenger and the driver's side. They are both cleared now. And the reason why I shaved this down is um, I don't want to run spacers, nor do I want to do extended studs. So just shaving this down a little bit to clear the backing of the wheel. Um, it's the simplest and easiest way to do it. I've shaved this down a ton more with Rota Zero Plus on EX Spindle and calipers. Now, it's weird that this works perfectly on my brother's... Uh, I guess Waggle Van DX front spindles, but because this car is RT, I know the brakes are a little bit different, or at least the caliper size bracketry is different. I just think the RT has more meat on this uh, bracket right here that obviously is rubbing on there, but uh, I'm almost certain that the brakes and this portion right here is the same as the DX and stuff. I could be wrong. Now, I'm gonna paint all of this in then a couple of days. Now I'm going to paint all this in a couple of days because I have rotors, brake lines, I got Hawk HP Plus pads that came in today. I'm going to be redoing the brake system on this car. I think I'm going to be doing the DA booster and master as well too. So we're going to take the wheel back off again um, eventually and then I'll take care of all of the open metal and stuff then. But right now I just want to um, get this car back on the ground, get it to the right height I want to have it at so I can show you guys this car on the street in the daylight. Right now I'm really just racing against the time I should not be talking let's just finish up the damn car So you guys can't really see it too much. I hope the light kind of helps. The car is at a very good ride height that I like it at to be lowered, but I would have been okay with how high it was before on the non offset wheels, but it looks good. I, I like it, it feels, it feels nice. 
and uh, it just needs an alignment. This car should be uh, good and golden for the road, aside from registration. And then we'll start setting this car up to get up onto the dyno. So another thing that I did was I took my muff flap from my car and I threw it on my brother's because I can't find his. And I'm probably going to be in the market for another set because I hate to know that mine is on his car and then I don't have a set for my car. You know what I mean? I think one more thing, just one more thing before... We end this video out. I kind of was tinkering last night when I was messing with the suspension. I actually still have the piece that goes here, even though I cut it a little bit and I kind of bent it back. Threw it on here last night, right? Let me see, let me see, like this. It clears the supercharger. And what I want to do right now is I'm just going to tack it in place just so it makes the supercharger less obvious sticking out of the hood. So I think that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm just going to grind a couple of spots, spot weld it in place, and just kind of leave that plate on there until we get the new hood for it. So guys, I just finished tack welding the plate on the hood, right, for the supercharger. And then uh, I was just sitting here hanging out with Herb, just chopping it up real quick. And then it clicked in my mind. And I was like, hold on a second. I know I didn't throw that piece away that's missing on the plate. So I dug around in my hose box where the plate was sitting in. And sure enough, we have the other piece that we're missing. So it's, dude, I'm telling you, it barely barely fits the pulley just barely hits this hump right here where it sits right there you see that so what i think i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna cut a little section out right here for the pulley because of engine movement and i'd rather have this whole entire thing covered up and have the pulley stick out a little bit opposed to having the whole entire supercharger sticking out you know what i mean so i'm gonna go ahead and just cut that little hole get my welding machine back out and patch this in in three two one bam look at that stitch welded hood I'm so happy that I kept these freaking uh, panels when I cut this out years ago. Um, I guess that's just part of me being a hoarder, right? <laughs> the hood is completely shut. Supercharger, almost 100% incognito except the pulley right there. But I mean, if you look at it, it's just looks like a black little patch on the hood. Not a big deal. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some painter's tape, lay it out, spray some uh, Laguna Gold, give it a little bit of clear coat since the hood is not that shiny, and then take the tape and just tape off these lines. Cause I'm not gonna spend a lot of time to try to stitch weld the entire thing and then do body work and all that jazz because I already have a hood for this car, the SIR style. It's gonna give me a lot more space in the center for the supercharger in case the engine torques backward, it's not gonna touch the hood. So we're gonna do body work and paint once we get that hood, but for the time being, at least this would be a lot more sleeker than driving around with a big hole in the hood this is pretty crazy and i'm pretty stoked about it and i yeah this it's pretty neat to find that piece but anyways i am going to wrap up the video right here we made a lot of progress or i think we made a lot of progress we got to show you guys a little bit of herb's whip right yep. we also showed you guys a little bit of fred's crx he came by we did some valve cover work with his car and obviously we did some work to my brother's car we got it to the right height we needed we situated the steering rack a little bit we were able to cover the hole in his hood and this car should be ready to go to the alignment shop real soon and then we can step into the performance side of things swap the pulley out the injectors the intake the cooling system then get the car retuned so if you guys enjoyed today's progress update on my brother's car be sure to leave a thumbs up and if you guys want to stick around for more work on my brother's car because like I mentioned before, we got the brake stuff coming in. Be sure to hit the subscribe button. But with that being said, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.